rights. <laughs> Low-level character I.O. lab. So, kind of more of the same objectives, um, but we're just getting down to a lower level of interaction. The lowest we'll go. So, we're going to write the lowest level routines for character I.O. for our keypad and LCD display. They include the put care LCD function and the get key function. Called from get care keypad in the last lab exercise you guys are probably feeling highly familiar with at this point. <laughs> um, so, this week it's two, it's two different, oh wow, I don't know where that came from. That's funny. I think I pasted it on there on accident. That's some LaTeX code that wasn't wasn't intended to be part of this lecture. Uh, yeah. So let's look at the two functions. Then we all, so we write the two functions. We write a main function that tests them, as usual, right? Is the main function just yeah, we'll, so we'll call the higher level, we'll call double in, which we'll call the mid-level ones, which we'll call the low-level ones, yeah. So yeah. In your instruction set, it's like, we have to call directly to the put care, it's the individual call, not using the main function to call it. Uh, in, this, in this description here, or down? How to write the main function. Oh, well, we'll get there. I, I, oh, do you mean like the, the whole initializing? Mm -hmm. No, this one is like, if you make a main function, we have to call the individual parts will be put care and get care individually. Oh, uh, okay. Not use the Let's, main function or anything like this. Well, I'll, we'll look at it again when we get there. I yeah. thought I'd had you guys do it from the higher level one. Yeah. I, so, okay. But I'll, let's take a look. Yeah. Let's take a look. So part one, the put care LCD. So the function put care LCD puts a single character on the LCD display. The character may be any in the ASCII code or any of the escape sequences described in exercise one. So F, V, N, or B. The prototype of the put care LCD function is put care LCD, where the argument value is the character to be sent to the display. If the input value is in the range 0 to 255, then the return value is also equal to the input value. Uh, yes, if the input value is outside that range, then an error is indicated by returning um, end of file. So put care LCD. Um, value, notice that these are ints, and so that allows us to um, uh, put in not only ASCII characters, but additional codes that don't necessarily have to be interpreted as ASCII characters. But we could always interpret them as ASCII characters if we um, cast them as cares, right? So if you cast an int as a care, it'll try to interpret it as, as an ASCII. Your version of put care LCD will replace that in the ME477 library. Calls to put care LCD might be, for instance. I have one question about yeah. this. Outside mm -hmm. of the range, outside of that range. Oh, yeah. What does it mean in this case? Uh, so, you know, I, I, so if you had one that was outside of 0 to 255, so like 256, for instance, would be outside of that range. Um, so if you gave put care, if you called, yeah, it would return EOF. Yeah. But normally when we try to instruct this put care, we just put this quote. I mean, the M is to the right. So this is a literal. So we can either give it a literal or we could give it uh, an actual integer. Um, 
So you could give it the ASCII integer code as well if you wanted to. You could just spin the same thing on the ASCII. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to, it's, this is, is a care literal, um, which has the value of the int. I don't know what M is. I don't remember. I don't have the ASCII code memorized. Believe it or not, I know it seems like I don't have a lot going on. But, um, <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, serial data is sent to the LCD display through what's called a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter, UART. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in some of the future labs when we focus on communication. Um, so write the put care LCD to perform four functions. So these are what we need it to do. Initialize the UART the first time that put care LCD is called. Kind of going to get the code for that. Um, uh, second, send a character to the display or send a decimal code to the display to implement an escape sequence. So. If it's a character, send a character. If it's not a character code, then send the corresponding escape sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, then check for the success of the UART write, and then return the EOF error code if appropriate. Otherwise, return the character to the calling program. So here's some background. So the UART must be initialized once before any data is passed to the display. It is initialized to the UART open function that sets appropriate MyRio control registers to define the operation of the UART. We will study serial communication in more detail later. For now, the initialization may be accomplished as follows. So um, we're going to get more in depth into this later, but the idea is that this is the UART on connector B that we're going to initialize. Um, I believe if you replace this with a 1, you get connector A. So remember there are three connectors on the MyRio, A, B, and I forget what the other one's called, the MSP connector, I think. <laughs> the, these A and B are called MXP, and then, and then there's another one that's called the MSP. So on the B connector, one of the MXP connectors, um, this is how you initialize the UART. Each one has a UART interface. Uh, in, in particular, the two MXP ones, at least, can be initialized like this. Uh, so this is just setting the, these couple parameters that need to be set. And then uh, you use this function, UART open and you hand it the address, so the UART address, um, using the ampersand, the baud rate, number of data bits, eight, and then um, the stop bit and the, and the parity bit. So you hand it these things. These are things that, once we actually look closer at UART open, this is what they're, it's looking for to initialize the UART. Um, if you hand these things to it without really understanding it at this point, uh, it, should, it should just initialize, okay? Um, and we're getting to something here called a structure. So UART is a type static MyRio UART. Um, it's a port information structure. And the return value is assigned to status, which has type NIFPGA status. How are we, you know, getting these new data types? Like, uh, uh, an NIFPGA status is not an int. How is this data type this? And the, the uh, way we're doing this in the header file, this is, you guys don't need to do this in the lab that you're writing, in the, in the functions that you're writing, but to know kind of what's going on above you is kind of nice. Um, using the type def keyword. So the type def keyword allows you to define a new data type. And 
so we're able to define a an NIFPGA status data type. And so we could have a new instance of that data type, just like we could have a new int, right? And this, this type def stuff, if you want to look into it in more detail, uh, as for whatever reason, floating to the top of my memory in Kernahan and Ritchie is section 6.7. I believe that's the, the section that, they, that he discusses, well, that they discuss, uh, type def in. And it's useful in certain instances. I didn't have a chance to really get into a detailed discussion of it. Although I am going to in, uh, talk about st structs a bit more. Um, so uh, the macros, UART, stop bits, one, zero, and UART parity none are defined in the UART header file. So you have to include the header file in your code. So the, the UART header file. So don't forget that. Um, perform this UART initialization just once and immediately return EOF from put care LCD if status is less than the VI success macro. So this is just sort of uh, a blanket statement. Like you just have to have this logic in there. So put that, put that logic in there. VI success macro is also defined, I think, in the UART uh, header. It's in one of our headers. I think it's the UART header. Escape sequences received as the argument of put care LCD control the cursor position and the function of the LCD display. And you guys have already used them a little bit. They're implemented by sending the escape characters of table B2, which is the same table we've seen now three times. But we're, keep, we're just keeping it close, keeping it handy in case we need it. Um, good. Arguments of put care LCD in the range 0 to 127, which are the ASCII codes, are sent to the display where they're interpreted as the corresponding ASCII characters. Other arguments in the range 128 to 255 are used for special control functions of the display. Both escape sequences and ASCII characters are sent to the display using the UART write function. A typical call would be... Okay, so status, you get back, UART write, you send it the address of your UART that you initialized once previously, and then you write your data, which is to say um, an, an array of your uh, either character codes or character codes and escape sequences or just escape sequences. So. And then you have to tell it the, the size, the number of, of uh, uh, characters to write or escape sequences that you're sending. So those are all arguments in UART, right? That's right. And this is, I mean, it's kind of an odd way of writing it. And it's just there so we can comment in line um, so, on each so one. So the first one, is that just like uh, you fill through seconds? Yeah, you always just yeah, so, yes, um, as long as you named it. So up here, up here, you were defining UART. Um, so UART is going to have some address in memory. And so you're giving it that address. So as long as you called it UART, which I highly recommend uh, uh, above when you initialized it, then you could just use the and then address. Write it. Is that a data array that we that you guys uh, that you construct, um, and it's it's containing the characters that you want to write, or the escape and escape sequences that you want to write. So, like for instance, you could you could have like clear screen, A B C or something like that could be your character array that you're sending it. But the put, the put care is using only put one one character at a time. Why do we need to use array to do it? Uh, why do we need to use array? Did we just return one? Well, one. you're you're. Uh, 
I think it's to do. I think it's to do things like the delete. Um, you're gonna have to for certain characters. You might need to do more than one. If you have an escape sequence in there, I think it's just so you can do more than just that. If there's a specific function you need, I think it's like with a delete key, for instance. If you want to send a delete, you have to do more than one. One write. Um, but you're right, I think in most cases at least, you, you really just need a single character to send. But you do need to still send it as an array so that UART write, even if it has just one, one value, yeah. uh, even if end data is one, uh, you have to still have to put it in like this, otherwise it, it will complain. So in this case we can write more than one bit on the LCD? Yeah, with UART write we can. Mm -hmm. So it worked like the same as print at LCD because it can print the whole string on the LCD. It looks, yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe that is a function. That's not how we're generally using it, but I think that it, this function can do that. Yeah. I have not tried, but we could try <laughs> it. Well, I don't have it in, in my Rio right now, but yeah. In theory, I, I, I do think it, it will do multiple. Uh, although, because we have an array to store each data that we put in this argument of the mm -hmm. type, and then we store it. We, we try to rewrite on this so one by one. Yeah, we, we should try. It would be fun to try at least. You just put it in a literal to see if it will go. Because the way we write, because the way we write in the thing at LCD. We use the put care to write one by one on this Right, screen. exactly. You're right. I mean, you're right. You're totally right. And it could be that we're, um, I mean, one reason why, I mean, one reason why uh, writing it as a separate function for each character kind of makes sense for us is that we don't have to do the initialization of this UART at the higher level. We just bury that in the lower level function so that we don't have to worry about it, the higher level. That's one way to think about why we might do this. I don't have a great sense of why uh, we wouldn't use this instead of the put care LCD from before. Yeah, for the whole string. Well, maybe we could construct it differently. I don't know. It's a good question. Something to think about. I don't really have a good answer for that. Um, we, we initialize in the sub program. It's difficult because we have to initialize once. Why don't we initialize in the main and then just call it and as many times as possible, something like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a point there. Uh, okay, so good. Again, return uh, EOF if status is less than VI success. So it's pretty much, I mean, you have a lot of the code kind of given to you for this uh, function, but this function um, I'm not giving you guys the pseudo code for, but snippets for it. The next one I give you, the git key, I give you guys the pseudo code for. The git key is the fun one. Okay, so are you ready? You will write the get key function, which waits for a key to be depressed on the keypad and returns the character code corresponding to that key. The prototype is you don't have any arguments, void, and it returns the character. Your version of get key will replace that in the C library. This is the C library standardized get key as well. So a call to get key might be key equals get key. <laughs> Uh, the keypad is a matrix of switches. When pressed, each switch uniquely connects a row conductor to a column conductor. The row and column conductors are connected to eight digital I.O. channels of connector B, DIO 0 through 7 of the MyRio as shown in figure B2. So this is what the keypad looks like. So we have our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 period, which actually for us is a blank on our 
keypad because uh, I didn't have, I don't know, I could just write a dot on there, but I just felt like that was kind of janky, so I didn't want to do that. Um, so then there's a minus sign, and, uh, backspace, enter, down, up. Okay? Those are our keys. When we press them, what we're doing is essentially we're, we're flipping a switch. We're turning a switch on, okay, that, that was off, that was disconnected. Um, there's essentially spring-loaded switches. So when you press them down, you close the switch. When you release them, you open the switch, okay? Um, these are, so just to be careful here, um, these intersections are not making electrical contact with each other, okay? So sometimes we would draw, draw like a, like going around or whatever to make that explicit. Instead what, they're, what this diagram shows is there's a dot that shows a connection between them. This is the good representation that you press on this one, it's connected to. Right, yeah, so essentially what you're doing is it, like if you if you depress one, right, then zero and four. is and four connected. If you if you press two, then one and four are connected. If you press three, then two and four are connected. Mm -hmm. and if you press eight, then one and six are connected. So there's a unique state for each key that's depressed, right? And that is our sort of key uh, uh, concept here, is that electrically, this stuff changes uh, depending on which of these is connected. And that's how we're going to de detect which key it is, based on these eight digital inputs and outputs. OK? So kind of describe that. So each channel may be programmed, so each of these DIO channels, each of these digital input and output channels, uh, may be programmed to operate as either a digital input or digital output, okay? So you can specify in code which one you want. Um, as an output, the channel operates with low output impedance as it asserts either a high or a low voltage at its terminal. Remember, when we're working with digital electronics, there's really only two states, high voltage or low voltage. So on or off, right? So logical, either true or false, OK? Um, so when it's uh, 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 considered to be an output, uh, has low output impedance, and it asserts either high or low at its terminal. And, and wh which it is, high or low, depends on how you've programmatically set it up. Um, so programmed as an input, the channel has high input impedance, also called high Z mode, as it detects either a high or a low voltage. So when it's an input, just like any, any good uh, uh, voltage uh, 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 measurement input, you want it to be high impedance, right? You don't want to have um, it flow a lot of current through it and affect what you're measuring. You want it to be really high impedance so, so that you read whatever um, high or low you're seeing, okay? Now, how will we detect if a key is depressed? Briefly, this is accomplished by driving as output one column to a low voltage, so that means digital false, with all the other columns in high Z mode. So we say, like for instance, maybe one will be the one that we'll, we'll do. So uh, uh, we say this is... is high Z, high Z, high Z, high Z, and then one of them, say it's DIO1, um, we'll drive to, uh, so one column to low voltage, so it'll be an output now low. Um, so this is how this is how we'll, we'll detect if something's depressed. 
Um, so we'll drive it to low. So all of these are high, and then we'll drive one of them to low. And then uh, all of the rows are scanned, detected. If a row is found to be low, key connected to that row uh, to the col driven column must be depressed. This procedure is repeated for each column. So what we'll do then is, is we'll scan through, we'll say, what are we measuring here? It's going to be measuring high unless, so 4 is going to be measuring high unless 2 is depressed. 5 is going to be measuring high unless 5 is depressed. 6 is going to be measuring high unless 8 is depressed. And 7 is going to be measuring high unless the, the decimal point is depressed. So if we scan these and none of them comes back, then none of them are depressed. Uh, so if, if they're all high, we're good. If, if one of them, if, if five comes back measuring low, we know that five is what's depressed. How in the first place the DO1 is low? Is, is that in the first place? Uh, so we set this to be the case. So, so we can control these. So we control these. And we, we set these to be that way. And then we say, okay, See if any of these four, five, six come back low. If one of them comes back low, we know which one it is. That, that we know which key is depressed. Then we go through each column. So then we'll say, okay, you know, now we'll scan. So essentially, we scanned column one first. Then we would scan like let's scan column two. Let's just go back and just like continually scan. So we'll set these so that one of them is low, and then we'll measure the other ones looking for low. And then it doesn't detect to the next one. Uh, exactly. So we just keep scanning. Just scan all of these dial all the time. Yeah. Every column, every row, have to find the thing exactly and then return this one. Exactly. And as long as we're doing this quickly enough, yeah. we'll catch if somebody, somebody presses, I mean, if somebody is like super quick, like <laughs> we, might not, we not, might not catch it, right? So is that one we care about the UART? Yeah, I mean, it's, no, we can do this at a really high rate, so it really doesn't, okay. we're fine, okay. we're fine. We could do this, th this would be, because uh, people's reaction when they press a button, like, it's like hundreds of, hundreds of milliseconds oftentimes. This is the problem when so. you have the touch screen, because you don't have the button to, to up and down all the time, it's just many times as possible. Yeah. The delay time. Yeah, I mean, as long as your time scales are significantly shorter than the user's time scales, like for us, a millisecond is like not very long, but for these computers, a millisecond is kind of a long time. So, I mean, for you, only having that thing depressed a millisecond would be hard to do. I mean, it, I would venture to say impossible for us to just <laughs> just have it in like contact for a millisecond. Two or three seconds to press one button because it has this bottom design is flip, flip back. Yeah, and it also depends on how much yeah. spring is in the button <laughs> and whatever. But yeah, it's it's we're probably good. Uh, uh, so we this scheme will work for us, and, it, and it's actually a really common scheme for keyboards. This is like pretty standard keyboard electronics. Uh, digital, I mean, what's, what's, what's nice about this is that, I mean, you, this, they don't have to be geometrically, so like our keyboard's got all these like, you know, they're not all aligned, right? Mm -hmm. um, but electrically they could be, right? You could have them all in columns and rows electrically, um, so that you know this one's pressed and this one's pressed and it's shift or whatever. Um, so, yeah, our, our, uh, our scheme here relies on you always using these as detectors and having one of these be our output uh, uh, at each time and then scanning for seeing that low signal come back. Now if we're going to use this logic, um, then essential to it is that a pull-up resistor is connected between each channel and the high voltage. So this is something that you see a lot in digital electronics, so-called pull-up resistor. Um, and the idea is that, so I, I have a little footnote here. Um, 
and a lot of these a lot of these systems that are built into boards like the MyRio, a lot a lot of like the Arduinos have these too. They have built-in pull-up resistors in them. So um, they describe that they have 40k pull-up resistors to 3.3 volts. And I don't know where my where my reference went, but that's to the MyRio uh, spec sheet. So the idea is that uh, unless a row is connected through a, a key to a low impedance, uh, low voltage column, uh, it will always read high. So if it's connected to a pull-up resistor, that means that the pull-up resistor uh, uh, delivers to it a high impedance, high voltage. And so it'll read high every time until it's connected to low, and it'll, then it'll read low. Because it's high impedance, high voltage. If it was connected directly to high voltage, then you'd have a problem because you'd be shorting out your high voltage. Uh, but fortunately, it's a high impedance to high voltage. And so you're going to read. It, it essentially switches the, um, the logic for you. If you had a, a, pull, a pull down resistor to ground, it would read zero until you connected it to high. So depending on the logic you're looking for, you can do it either way. And, and in fact, you can invert this completely so that instead of doing um, low here, you do high, and then you have these things all use uh, pull down resistors. Works just fine. Of course, our MyRio has pull up resistors, so it wouldn't work just fine for us. <laughs> but if you had that, uh, pull down resistors, it would work fine too. You just have to go high instead of going low. Detect the high then. then we would just detect high instead of detecting low. So either either one is fine as long as as long as you can detect a change, right? So it, as long as when you're not depressing, it's high, and then when you do depress, it goes low. Um, good. So our strategy for Git key is shown in the pseudocode of that algorithm too. So same as last time I'm giving you this, there's a lot of there's a lot of loops in here, but it's just because of how we have to do um, our sort of algorithm for setting one high and setting the other ones, one of them low and then going through it, so they've got a lot of loops, right? So initialize the eight digital channels. So there's our, you know, do it once thing. And then while a low bit is uh, 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 not detected, do this. So for each column, do. For each column, set the column to high Z. So the first thing we do is just go through all columns, set them all to high. And then we're going to just set one of them to low. <laughs> and then for each row, read it. And if that bit is low, then we'll break the row loop. OK? Uh, What's with the nested for loop for the each column? This one? No, the, that one and the one above it. The one above it? So for each column, um, we're going to we're gonna we're gonna inside that loop we're gonna set them all to high first, and then we're gonna set one to low. But we're gonna do that setting each of these. So we want to do that for each of the columns, right? So we have to set all the columns to high, so we go through all the columns, and then we gotta set one of them low. But we want to set each one of them low separately. So we had to do this, there's a double for loop there, right? Which is, it feels, it feels like you're doing a lot of extra work. Um, you could maybe do one for loop and have uh, uh, an if statement in there. I think you could do it. You could do that logic. Um, it, we're kind of doing a little extra work by setting them all high and then setting one low. Maybe you could work out. You don't have to do it this way. I mean, like totally. If you if you make the functionality behave the same, you can use go to statements if you want. Um. <laughs> so when you when you say set one to low, don't you mean when we 
I know. So this is so this is setting the output of DIO. So we're going to treat DIO one in this case. This is one case. Um, set DIO one to low, meaning we're going to scan for a depress in this column. And if we set this to low, and none of these two five or eight or the decimal is depressed, then none of these rows will read low. But if one of them, if one of them is depressed, like five is depressed, then this low is going to show up over here. So we're going to scan through essentially each column and each row to see yes. is you know we know we know which one we're looking, which column we're looking for, and then we know which row we're looking for, and then we look for that low to show up. So it's like I'm trying to think of a good ex example. Yeah. It's like for that one game, right? The battleships game. You're just trying to. Yeah. It's, not it's like battleships, but then you could like ask by column. It's like battleships, but you're like. It's like battleship, but you can shoot back maybe. So. Just <laughs> It's like it's like battleships but more fun. <laughs> yeah. I feel like battleships are too easy to cheat at. Kids cheat all the time. I used to cheat all the time. Miss <laughs> 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 like move your guy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. So we've got our low detection through this algorithm, right? And and uh, so we we go through set them all to high, set one column to low. We look for a row to go low. We scan through all the rows to go low. And if we get through the rows and we haven't found it. Then we're going to go on to the next column and we're going to scan and we're going to look again. Is break row loops and then we break the while? Uh, uh, so if, so this one here is if, if we're scanning the rows and we find a low, we're not going to keep looking so we break out of the loop as soon as we find it. And if the bit is low, so meaning we found one, in row here, then this one will break us out of the column loop as well. So we could break out of both loops. Because once we find one, that's our, that's our button. Yeah. Like we found it. Um, we found, we, we've identified it and we're ready to go. So then we, um, at, you know, when you, if you haven't detected one, if you haven't detected a low, nothing's depressed, then you wait for some amount of time. And this is just to save ourselves some processor uh, uh, cycles, so wait functions are often there. They're either there for some sort of timing functionality or to save ourselves some, some timing uh, or some, some processor cycles. So that's, yeah, yeah. So this, um, well actually we're going to write our own wait that has a certain timing associated with it and then one of the next labs, we decide how much time, real time, that actually takes. Wait, so we're going to write a wait? Yeah, well, I mean, by we'll write it, I mean I'm going to give it to you. Okay. <laughs> um, but the wait, the wait uh, can be deployed there to wait in between um, column calls. And then uh, we can also wait uh, while the row is, is still down. So we we want this thing to function like if we press it, we don't want to release the, release the function until we release the key. So we don't want this thing to, for instance, give it to the calling program and have it print to the LCD until we let go. So we press down and then we let go and then it shows up. Why, why does that matter? I guess it's just a, a functionality of it. I don't know. A lot of get keys use. I don't know. Uh, that one isn't as important. Um, well, 
I, I shouldn't say that. Uh, it is important. It is important if the calling program is going to immediately call get key again because we would double up potentially, yeah. right? Or you could like repeat. I mean, if this thing calls, if it runs through that cycle really, really fast, then you could just fill up the buffer by like just pressing it for just like that. Yeah, it, it, it could go through a bunch of times and pick up a bunch. So you would want to at least slow that down. If, I mean, if you want to have the repeat possibility, you would at least want to have it wait for a little while before it returned so that a person just pressing a key wouldn't accidentally get a double, a double press out of it. And then identify the key from the row and column in a table. So we're going we're gonna to build a, a table and then return that, that key, that character. So that's, that's really the whole thing. Um, not too bad. So the uh, channel initialization is a, a structure. And I am going to talk about structures in the guidance section. Um, but the, the structure essentially is defined in the DIO.h, so we don't have to define it ourselves. Uh, it identifies the control registers and the bit uh, to read or write for a channel. Uh, and this is just something that is set up for us in the header file, so we don't have to worry about it too much, but just wanted to show you that that's what's going on sort of behind the scenes. Declare an array uh, of my Rio DIO structures, one element for each of the eight necessary channels in a loop, initialize the channels as follows. So my Rio DIO, uh, uh, we initialize, and then we go through the loop, and we write to each channel. And notice that we've got this, this syntax, we've got the periods. And that is a structure uh, uh, syntax. And we'll talk about that syntax at the end. But essentially, if you guys have seen, um, oh, what are they? M MATLAB calls them, do they call them structures? Yeah, structs. Yeah, structs. Yeah. So MATLAB structs, if you've seen MATLAB structs, it's, it's, I don't know that there are any major differences. At least they're very similar. And it uses the same syntax of using the, the dot to access stuff. So you can name stuff inside of them, um, and you can access it later. So each, so you can have an array of structs, and that's what we've got here. You access array elements i, and then you take the the dot dir variable from it, um, and we're, what we're doing is we're assigning to that in this case. So this is another sort of snippet of code that is kind of provided to you so that you don't have to thrash around too much. Um, again, the symbols are, sh are shown, uh, uh, symbols shown are defined in the DIO header file. Recently, we, we will not come out with this code. <laughs> I'm so like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, there's some of this stuff that's just really, uh, well, and some of this, is also given. Um, so when you get the when you get your embedded computer, a lot of times it comes with a lot of C interface drivers that come with it. So like to interact with certain parts of it, um, it's there are some built-in aspects. So so the UART stuff for the MyRio came with a bunch of C header files. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, not like, it's not like you have to write them all from scratch every time. So a lot of times, your, you know, whatever the embedded computer that you get comes with header files that define these things, so you don't have to do it. So, so you mean nice. this, this, this kind of code can be the manual of this hardware that you bought? Yeah, yeah. So as long, I mean, it depends, but if they're expecting you to be able to program it in C, which for any embedded computer, um, that would be the, the case. They would expect that. So yeah, it would come, it would come. The header files often come, because otherwise, you know, somebody getting something to 
actually start working on it is a huge amount of work that you don't even, I mean, just getting a keypad to work with it would just be an incredible feat because you'd have to get the UART stuff, initializing functions all written. So they, they often come with those, and then you have to write for your specific piece of hardware how to do an interaction, but it, it'll do an initialization of the UART communication for you, or it'll, it'll give you the function so that you just have to hand it the address and it'll just go. So it's very rare that you'd have to start from totally from scratch to do the, uh, the I.O. drivers. Um, and even in this case, even though we're going to a very low level, like we are, we're going to like, we're reading digital inputs and outputs to determine which key is being depressed. Like that's a very low level driver. But we at least don't have to write our own initialization of the UART interface for this device. I mean, that would be another level of work to do that we're fortunate enough not to have, not to, have to do that. But that's, that's common. A lot of these things, these things would come with a header file that would let you do that at least. They don't know wh which uh, keypads you're going to connect to, but they do know that you're going to use UART for something, right? So they can at least write those ones for you. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of times they're going to write a driver. Uh, uh, so f it, when you get an embedded computer, uh, a lot of times that embedded computer, that maybe like the system on a chip or uh, the full board, whatever it is that you've got, is going to come with some, some uh, interaction of like how to write to this pin, like a, a C header file for like the the DIO, uh, um, digital ins and outs, or the analog writes, the analog reads. Um, it'll often have those built in. Otherwise, it's really hard to do. You have to start writing um, like assembly code to interact with their, with their product, which most of the time people aren't willing to do. So <laughs> For example, this microphone, is that any chips on it? Yeah, there absolutely is. So it has to do the USB communication. Um, and so there's going to be an interaction driver there mm -hmm. now through, through USB. Now, if you want to interact with this thing, um, and now we're, I'm interacting with it through the operating system. But if I wanted to interact with this thing in a uh, sort of custom program, and I probably there are no inputs to it. But if I wanted to access like the like the, the digital ins that I can get the, the, the digital outs from this. Um, the drivers might exist, they probably exist to interact with uh, like C for instance. There's probably some C header files for it. A lot of times there are because a lot of people at the operating system level are going to write the driver um, in C. So probably Probably it's going to come and see. Most of the time you're, you're safe with it's going to come and see, but you don't know for sure. It could come in anything. And they may not give it to you either. So they might just not like, like some guy messing around with their, trying to hack into their devices. <laughs> they, they, uh, sometimes they'll hide that. They won't give you source for it. But if you're a developer, a trusted developer with them, then they might let you. Yeah, because for yeah. example, if you be another device, not a computer, you want to connect this microphone to the musical device. Right. And just wanted to recognize and take the input device. Exactly. So if you don't have a driver written for like your Arduino um, for this USB microphone, then yes. somebody's got to write that driver. Yeah. Uh, and and sometimes sometimes uh, you can adapt one for those made for another type of machine. Yeah. So it does depend. So let's try to finish. Let's try to finish this up. We're we're getting close. So the channel I.O. Uh, input. So digital channel read function prototype is this. And so essentially, you read a bit from a given channel. OK? So typically, what you're going to say is DIO read bit from the address of the channel row 
plus four. So that is your DIO read bit. Is it row plus four, I mean row four or? Uh, row plus four. So this is another one of these like, you have to know that it's plus four you have to read from. But uh, uh, the, the row that you want uh, plus four in your index gives you the, the read bit. So this is when, you, when you're going to try to read each of your rows, this is what you have to do. Um, DIO read bit. Four? Sorry? It's always plus four? Yeah, it's always plus four. Because our table is four by four. Why not we just step from one to four? Uh, our, loop, our loop list can be indexing from J. It's because four, it's because we're um, it's because our rows start at four, right? So where's this figure? So columns are zero, one, two, three. So our rows are DIO four, five, six, seven. So if you want to know row zero, it's DIO four. Row uh, 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 one is DIO five. So that's why we have to add four. Because remember, when we, we initialized the CH, we went through um, for each of the channels. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And our row number is starts at four, so zero, the zero with row needs to be the fourth index of that array. We could have set it up differently. I mean, that's, you just have to be aware that that's what we did when we initialized this. We could have um, set it up so that our, our channels were named something different, but can it works. Can we initialize this differently? For example, if we put from channel I1 to 4, and then another one is channel, the for the row is J1 to 4, will that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. So you could do that too. It's up to you. I mean, this is just a suggestion. This is just, you don't have to reuse this. It's just a suggestion. No. In addition to reading the bit, DIO read bit sets the channel to high Z mode, right? That was what we said when we're, when we're uh, reading from that channel, when that channel is configured to be an input, then it's in high impedance mode. For the digital writes, so we do these digital writes, you have to tell the channel and then the value, and it, it can be either... Zero or one, right? True or false? So true is high, false is low. We have this, this custom data type that was defined using type def. Again, NIFPGA bool. And so you can either have an, F, an NIFPGA true or an NIFPGA false. So you need to either set it to true or false, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, in your in your right, and then let me see. Now I'm gonna have to get my charger. I don't have enough time. Off it. We'll, we'll see if I can get to. Yeah, I can get through this. So key code, key code returned by get key is determined by the indices of a key code table. Key code table can be stored in a statically declared 4x4 four four array of characters. So this is how you define a two-dimensional array. Um, instead of using a comma like in MATLAB, you actually have to do two different sets of brackets. And then um, you, you initialize it by telling it how large, 4x4. Four four. And then uh, you have nested braces to tell you this is the syntax pretty I mean pretty straightforward stuff just like you would do in a lot of programming languages um, and you can access each uh, index in a similar way table of one two gives you the uh, uh, row one which says zero one column two zero one two so table of one two would give you six 
Symbols up, down, ent, and delete are defined in the header file. So we can just use those symbols. And then the weight. So uh, we can use this for timing, and we're going to talk more about it. And actually, one of the lab exercises is to derive precisely and then measure what the length of time is uh, that this weight function waits. But pretty much what we do is we just count down from 417,000. <laughs> and that's it. Um, and that, 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 is a, that is a predictable amount of time on the process. So. How much time is that? Well, I can't tell you, because that's going to be one of the things you have to find out in your life. Uh, okay, so ah, let's see if we can finish this. Writing the main function. Uh, writing the main function. That, what? Does C have like a TikTok function? Like a one? We could write our own TikTok. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that C has any standard defined ones. Yeah. So with timing in C, we have to, what's nice is that each thing, like an ad, takes a certain amount of time. So like you could sit there and just do something for a certain amount of time just by having it perform some function over and over again. So it has a predictable amount of time that each processor cycle takes. And then we can say, OK, well, if we want it to wait two milliseconds, that's x loops through this operation. Um, yeah. So we'll talk more about that. Just delay? Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's essentially all that it's doing. Um, OK, so write a main function that tests your put care LCD and get key. It should make at least one individual call, so that is right, to each of the put care LCD and get key. Be sure to test the value out of range error returned by put care LCD. So send, send it in a 257 or make it a, a cool 300 or whatever you want. Um, collect an entire string using F gets keypad, which automatically calls get key, okay? So use the higher level one as well, and then write an entire string using printf LCD. So once again, using the higher level, I guess the mid-level, we're not using double in. Um, we're using the mid-level uh, and the lowest level calls from, from your mate. And then when you get into the lab, hopefully previously uh, you were getting some nice um, uh, compiled programs, and then you can test and debug your program in the lab. We'll do the guidance, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this and get my charger first.